Welcome to the Dojo Young Samurai. Konnichiwa, Young Samurai. We're back for uh, chapter four of the uh, Ninja Night Read. My name is Chris Bradford and I am reading from my sampler, Young Samurai, The Way of Fire. Now in the last chapter, chapter three, um, we were introduced to Hoju Jitsu. Uh, Jack was learning the art of rope time. Uh, and then they went for uh, a final dinner um, at their Shikubo, where they were staying. Uh, and suddenly, Sensei Hosokawa announced there was one more challenge, the way of fire. So let's begin. Chapter four, the way of fire. The 15 students, led by Sensei Yamada, left the dining hall of the Shikubo and crossed a curved wooden bridge and entered the forest. It was now twilight, and the last rays of the fading sun glimmered between the branches of the cedar trees. An eerie evening mist drifted through the undergrowth, and the darkening forest took on a haunted air. Jack's sense of unease only increased when he spied row upon row of moss-covered tombs. They lined the path on either side like giant bulbous mushrooms, the headstone seeming to stretch on and on into the depths of the woodland. Who's alone? Jack whispered uneasily. We've entered the cemetery of Okunwan Temple, since the Yamada replied under his breath. They are the graves of samurai warriors and lords who have died for Japan. There are thousands. Sensei Yamada simply nodded his head. Jack glanced around. With so many lost souls in one place, he swore he could imagine the cries of battle echoing around him. Up ahead, a soft orange glow seeped through the mist. Is that the way of fire? asked Jack. No, this is Tororo, the Hall of Lanterns, explained Sensei Yamada, as they emerged into a glade dominated by a large wooden temple. It's the holiest place in Koyasan. The four double doors set into the building were wide open, bathing the students in a fiery flood of light. Stepping inside, they gazed around in silent awe. The walls and ceilings of the temple were aglow with muted lanterns like the embers of a thousand dying suns. Not a single space was left unfilled by the strange brass lamps. Their saffron-coloured flames, combining with trails of incense smoke to create a magical, unearthly world. Kneeling before a wooden effigy of the Buddha, monks in sand-coloured robes chanted softly, their murmur of prayer endlessly repeating. What is this place? breathed Jack. This temple houses the tomb of Kobo Daishi, the great teacher of Buddhism, said Sayamada explained, bowing his head to the main shrine. It is believed he is not dead, but simply meditating, awaiting the arrival of Miruko, our future Buddha. That is why there are so many samurai and daimyo buried here. They await his reawakening. And the lanterns? Upon each is engraved the name of the deceased. The sacred flames are collected alight to honour their memories. Some have been burning for over 500 years. Is this the way of fire then? inquired Akiko, whose long dark hair glistened in the golden glow of the lanterns. No, replied Sensei Yamada, picking up a lighted candle from a nearby shrine and leading them out through a side door. The students exchanged confused looks, were even more baffled when Sensei Yamada brought them to the clearing with the swamp and woodpile. As they approached the marshy waters, Jack could see Emmy raising her hand to protest against entering the swamp again but Sensei Yamada stopped short and asked them to sit and put aside their wooden bokken. The way of fire is an ancient ritual of purification, he began, holding a candle before him. It is a means of burning away attachments and evil, of letting go of the things that hinder you on the path to enlightenment. Sensei Yamada placed the palm of his hand immediately above the flame and began to chant. Om Gata Gata Para Gata Para Sam Gata Bodhisattva. What's he saying? whispered Jack to Emmy. It's the mantra from the Heart Sutra, the best known of the Buddhist scriptures, Emmy replied, watching with growing amazement as Sensei Yamada continued to hold his palm to the flame. 
It explains the fundamental emptiness of human existence. Precisely, interrupted Sensei Yanda, his hand remaining in place. The Heart Sutra teaches that form is emptiness. Emptiness is form. In emptiness, there is no form, nor feeling, nor perception, nor impulse, nor consciousness. And so it follows, by emptying your mind, you empty your body of all sensation, all pain, and all suffering. Sensei Yamda lifted his hand from the flame and displayed his uninjured palm for all to see. I trust that none of you have been neglecting your meditation practice while on this fishery, he chided. The students all shook their heads. Jack meditated regularly in the mornings now. He'd been introduced to the concept during Sensei Yamada's Zen class, and, though he'd been sceptical at first, he'd soon discovered that it helped him focus for the day ahead. Good. Then I ask each of you to empty your minds and to hold out your hands. The students did as they were told, half closing their eyes and taking a deep breath to begin the meditation process. Sensei Yamada gave them a few moments and slowly worked his way down the line holding the lighted candle beneath each of their outstretched hands. When he came to Jack, he brought the flame so close, the tip of it actually licked his skin. Jack, his mind calmed, was surprised to feel no more than a cool, tingling sensation. Taken aback by the experience, he briefly lost his concentration, and the heat rapidly rose. Before it did any damage, since the amateur had moved on. Ow! cried Saburo sucking his palm where the flame had singed his flesh. Sensei the Aaron raised one eyebrow, but offered no sympathy. You clearly haven't been practicing your meditation exercises, he observed. Sensei Yamada moved on to the final student, Kazuki, who was so confident in his own abilities that he lowered his hand into the flame itself. So have I passed the final test? Asked Kazuki, a smug grin on his face. Sensei Yamada shook his head the mischievous twinkle back in his eyes. This isn't the way of fire. This is merely a spark before the blaze, he said, tossing the burning candle onto a huge stack of wood behind him. That is the way of fire. There was a sharp crackle, and a moment later, the enormous wood pile burst into flames. The air became filled with the spicy aroma of cedar resin and the acrid sting of wood smoke. The forest shimmered red the blaze becoming so intense that students were driven back by the heat. So who will be first? shouted Sensei Yamada over the roar of the flames, indicating for one of them to enter the hellish furnace. Everyone took a step back, all bar Jack, who stood staring at the fire in disbelief. He had experienced some punishing tasks as part of his training to become a samurai warrior, but this was suicidal. Jack could said Sensei Yanda, smiling broadly. I would have expected nothing less of you. Jack, glancing over his shoulder, saw all the other students standing behind him in a line. He alone stood out in front, appearing to have stepped up to the challenge. But, but I didn't move. Sensei Yamada ignored the protest and beckoned him closer. Jack had no choice. He couldn't back out now. He would lose face among his classmates, Kazuki in particular, would delight in telling everyone at the Nitin Ichiru how the Gai Jing had been too much of a coward to enter the way of fire. Jack reluctantly approached the raging inferno, the intense heat scorching his skin. A moth, drawn by the flames, fluttered in front of Jack's face before flying straight into the fire. The little insect was snuffed out in an instant. So young samurai, I hope you enjoyed chapter four of The Way of Fire. Do come back for the next reading, chapter five, uh, on my YouTube channel, Chris Bradford, author. I hope you enjoyed it. Sleep well. Sayonara.